can. Share the show out. Tell your buddies about it. Let's go ahead and dive into topic number one, which to us is the biggest topic of the day, and that is the ACC finally revealed their scheduling model. They don't have dates yet, but they have somehow talked Notre Dame into being an ACC member. Now, we discussed this last week before you left. That was an option. There was the pod option of teams playing home and homes against four other programs, and that being the only games that the ACC plays. There was the 10 plus one, which is what they ended up going with. There was the eight plus one. You know, this conference typically does eight conference games a year. That all is going on. And then, of course, the Big Ten and Pac-12 obviously announced that they were going conference only a few weeks ago. The Big Ten schedule is set to be revealed likely tomorrow or Monday. And they will be going division heavy early. So we are going to get Ohio State, Penn State early. We're going to go to Ohio State, Michigan early. We're going to get Michigan, Michigan State early. All these big-time games that you typically don't see until the end of October, early November, or, or sometimes the end of November, you're going to get these really, really early. Um, let's go ahead and start off with the ACC. Uh, you've had a chance to sit down and kind of look at the schedule, see you know who's playing who and whatnot. We, we don't get a Miami-Notre Dame game. Not a, not a fan of that. But uh, it looks like, I mean, it looks fun. I'm, I'm kind of okay with this. Uh, how, how do you feel about this? I mean, yeah, all I cared about was is, is uh, Notre Dame playing uh, Florida State, Miami, and Clemson. And that's, that's the only thing I looked at. They are playing Clemson. We're getting that. That's a good game. Um, and I think we're going to see that twice. Do I they think, have divisions? Have they divided this thing up? How are no, no, we no. going to get an no ACC division. champion? No division. It is the I two didn't think best so. teams. Now that we're going 11. It, or, well, yeah, odd number of teams. Interesting thing about this, by the way, uh, they are, they're they doing it by winning percentage. So yep. they expect to have some games missed. They are looking at this in that way. So that, that was part of the fine print at the end of this. Um, yeah. I. But there has to be a minimum game played, right? I didn't see anything about that. Like one team can't get the Rona, and then three of their opponents get the Rona, and <laughs> so they play four games, but they go undefeated, and then so they're in. That, that We're not going to have that, right? Surely not. I, I wouldn't think so. I yeah. wouldn't think so. It, it didn't say anything about that on there. Um, I'm looking at the website right now. I mean, it's – Well, I don't, I don't really care how it works out. You can figure the math all you want. We're, we're – Unless something drastic happens or I'm just really wrong with what I think about these teams, we're getting Notre Dame and Clemson twice. Uh, this says all television revenue for the 2020 season, including Notre Dame's home games broadcast by NBC, will be shared equally by all 15 institutions. Yeah, so, so Notre Dame is going to yeah. split their revenue, but so they're going to lose some money here. Uh, we think. I mean, Well, Notre if they're Dame splitting it even, they're going to lose money. Yeah, but they're also going to get a, a taste of that ACC network. So Yeah, but they're only going to get a piece of it. They're going to get one, what, 13th of it? Yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah, no, you're you're right. They'll, they'll get no, And they're going to get, get one 15th. 13th of their contract? Well, one 15th. Yeah, because it's 15th. Oh, 15th. Shit, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, so they're going to get two 30th. Yeah, that's it, it's it's interesting. That's not right. So, uh, so the 11 games will be played over at least 13 weeks with each team having two open dates. Uh, I'm a little confused. It says that the season's first games will take, the play, or take place the week of September 7th through the 12th. I am not sure why you would not go ahead and start on September 5th, you know, Liberty weekend. Now, it says the 7th through the 12th. So, does that mean that they're going to play weekday games? I mean, it, you wouldn't think so, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't think so. I don't know. But now I'm confused. But hang on now. ESPN notoriously has a Thursday night game and a Tuesday night game or whatever, like the Friday night games. And if and those are normally lower-tier schools. If those lower-tier schools are not playing this year, then just for inventory's sake, they might be reaching out to the big, you know, the Power Five schools and saying, hey, who, who wants a Tuesday night football game? Who wants a Thursday night football game? That is, that's interesting. That is because that's inventory for them. You got to think about who's paying the bill for this whole thing, and it is ESPN. Now that's you're 100 percent right. So well, and and Fox, 
I mean, uh, well, no, no, no Fox, ACC, didn't, Fox yeah. doesn't have a Tuesday night game. Fox but, doesn't have a third. Fox's inventory is like four games a week. That okay? is true. That is ESPN's true. ESPN's inventory is like 35 games a week. Very, very true. Very, very true. FS1 will do like a Friday night here and there, but but I, I, they don't have ACC stuff. So, uh, so yeah, we don't have to worry about that at all. So, the, the schedule, of course, coming yeah, out. Yeah, I don't understand why not starting on – Labor Day weekend doesn't make that doesn't make any sense to me. Pushing back yeah. any further is just not. Things aren't going to get better in a week or two. Yeah, okay? it's, it, why, we, why would you've you either not... made this bed, you've done all your analysis, and you've said we're going to do it, and we're going to do it this way, and this is how we're going to roll this thing out. Starting it later isn't going to help make it easier or better or anything. Just get it going. Now you you've got that right. Um, North Carolina does get Notre Dame at home. I noticed they did not have North Carolina and Clemson play each other, and it kind of seems like maybe they are setting it up so that they get a North Carolina Clemson ACC championship game. I don't see and that happening. I I don't either, but we'll see. Will Gomez jumps in. He said, "Look who's back." Uh, <laughs> talking about Chris, Damian jumps in. He said, "What's up?" And then Matt said, "If the athletes are not in class and it's online, they won't worry about missing school or work." Uh, Tia three jumps in and says, "Hello, mates." That's what I'm talking about. We got Twitch, YouTube, Periscope, and Facebook all jumping in right now. So if you want to be a part of the program, go ahead, jump in that chat box. It all populates right there in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, Right now, we're discussing the ACC Network for those that are watching the show live. Or not the ACC Network, but the ACC football schedule. They are saying December 12th or December 19th for the top two teams based on conference game winning percentage, and it's all one division. Do you think there's a chance that if they do this this season and they like it? Let, well, let's go with this. One, do you think they ever go back to buy games? Elaborate. Like, if they like this 10-game season. The pay-for like, wins? Yeah, yeah. Do Do you think they just get away from the pay-for wins? Uh, No, because I... <laughs> I think other ADs are going to scream, and these this lower tier schools are going to need that money. And until the NCAA can come up with a, a way to to basically charge, listen, I, I think this is great. I think this is the best way to do it. I like twelve games. I don't know why we can't play more than ten, even if they're against good teams. Um, and uh, and I'm I'm a hundred percent for just everybody who's a Power Five team throws two million dollars in a hat, and that two million dollars gets ciphered to all the smaller schools that need help funding their their schools. I think I, I like that idea. I really like that idea because you know how much I hate that. Yeah. Uh, the other question that I had was, um, do you think that they will eventually go with getting rid of divisions? You know, at division titles, I think for some schools, that's kind of a big deal. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the Big 12 has already done this, right? They, they are, they've got no divisions. The but they only, they only don't have divisions because they have 10 teams. Agreed, but that could be five. I mean, it could be five. No, but per that side. wouldn't make any sense to have two five team divisions when you have to play nine conference games. So you're going to play everybody in the conference but one team? That would be weird. I agree. That, that doesn't make any logical sense. If they added two new teams, they would 100% go to two divisions. Well, what I'm saying is if if they go this route and say the AACC decides to bump up to nine conference games and you can rotate through that schedule a lot more quickly, kind of the way that, that we assume that the SEC should be doing, um, I, I think, I mean, think about how many different years the best two teams in the SEC have been from the same division. I mean, it happens pretty regularly. Yeah, but those two teams have to play one another. So to make them play again, it doesn't make sense. Because football is not a thing where if you beat the guy the second time, it shouldn't matter more. Unless it's in a championship game, it shouldn't matter more. Well, and that's what would be happening here. It'd be in a conference championship game. That's a bullshit championship. That's made only to make money. Yeah, that's okay. You've got a valid point. Michael Fritz jumps on Twitch. He said, I'm just excited. It seems to me like we're turning towards getting some college football. Yeah, I believe that as well. Uh, Will Gomez said, if the tutors are taking tests before online classes, won't make difference anyway. Uh, Terry Brewer jumps in. He said, what's up? And let's see, Tia3 on Twitch said, some help. My school has American football equipment, 
but doesn't let us use it. But when it's about soccer, they give everything they have. I want some contact sport. Uh, Romania doesn't let it do it. Uh, eight. So we got somebody from Romania in here. Any any thoughts on this? Uh, so they like they have the equipment, but won't let anybody use it. It's yeah, apparently like locked under lock and key. That's what he says. I mean, off air, I would probably be willing to introduce you to somebody who might be able to break into something, but <laughs> not on air. I would never coerce somebody to break the law on air. That would, or, hey, or ever, ever, uh, ever T- at all. Tia 3 or TLA 3, whichever it is, I can't quite see it. Uh, go ahead and hit us up on Twitter. I'm at Gary WCE. Chris <laughs> is at Chris B. Giannini. Hit us up. We'll discuss that. So sure Roscoe can break a window. You got that right. Uh, Matt said, "Oh, Terry's here. Oh, this this should get interesting. We'll see what happens with the rest of this uh, this broadcast here. Let's go ahead and you know what uh, uh, the Big Ten stuff, the division games being moved early. You a fan of that? Uh, I mean, it's necessary. I, I yeah. just want to make sure we get those games in. Yeah, that's I all. think that's the biggest thing. And, and this is and this is why I appreciate the ACC at least coming out and saying this. The SEC we think is going to go to conference only. The ACC is leaving that plus one game. Them and the Big Ten go play each other. Like, I didn't. I didn't actually bring that uh, up. The, uh, the uh, ACC, the, the Big Twelve, because they're the only two. They're the only two schools left. Yes, Conferences left. So, so Big Twelve, ACC, and SEC. Um, Let's jump back into the ACC right quick. I, I didn't mean to spend forever on this, but I completely forgot about it. They have set this up with the the one non-conference game and setting up the stipulation that it has to be a a team in your conference. And they have to adhere by the same rules that the ACC would. Otherwise, you can't play them. Well, this basically leaves all the onus on the SEC. Like, hey, if you want these games... Cool, we'll play them. But if you decide to cancel them, everybody's going to know that it was on you. Like, do you like you the way what? they came out early? I don't. I don't. You think? Oh, so you think you're getting into a you backed out, so you're a coward move with the SEC? Really? <laughs> really? That's what you're doing. That's your move. Come on. I know. Come on. We kicked the shit out of that conference year in and year out. Outside of Clemson, Clemson can beat. 80% of our conference, yeah. okay? Well, but, I mean, I think they could beat 100% of our conference, but Oh, okay, they regularly. have beaten 100% of our conference over time, but they don't every time. No, agreed. Like, they're legit ball games, okay? Like, the rest of them that you could chalk up WS2 unless they just sleepwalk through it or, or something crazy happens in South Carolina. But, but no, okay, all right. Take that one school out – Almost every other school we have would beat the shit out of the rest of your conference. Agreed. Agreed. So, so I'd be, I'd be real careful with, Hey, it's not real careful. You say whatever you want. I mean, this is, this is just some, some drunk frat guy just picking the biggest MMA martial arts dude in the bar and trying to talk shit. But that guy says, I I know I can't touch him because I'll kill him. And then I'll go to jail and, (laughs) and it's just not worth it. So yeah, th- this is political back and forth. Is all this is. This is. Uh, but if I'm the SEC, yeah. you don't care. You do. You do yeah. not care. Listen, the, one of the best lines that nobody talks about from Game of Thrones is the lion does not concern himself with sheep. It just yeah, doesn't. You got that right. Damien jumps in on YouTube. He said, "I still don't see why these student athletes have to risk their lives just to have a season, especially when they're not getting paid at all. Makes no sense." Uh, Terry said, "Because we need football, and Chris and Gary need something to break down." Damien. And then Michael said, risk their life. I think that's a little extreme. They can opt out if they want. They're managing risk like adults. Yeah, the whole risking their life thing. And you, that's that's you, extreme. You're going to try and get me worked up here. I swear to God. Uh, the, the survival rate on this virus yeah. across the country is 99.7%. Yeah. That, that is for all ages. It's even higher for kids their age. Healthy 18 to 22 year olds. That I mean, you're talking about a 0.1% hospitalization rate. If you see the one article that gets tweeted out virally or shared out on Facebook or whatever, you see that one article, of course it's going to scare you to death. Oh, 18 year old with no pre existing conditions gets COVID and dies. It's a minuscule thing, and that's never telling you the whole story. You got to look at the data, you got to look at the numbers and pay attention to what's going on. Like I, and, I and the part about them not getting paid, 
they're getting paid. That's why they want to come back and do this. Yeah. It's just not above <laughs> table. It's not above fray. You don't know how much they're making. Yes, exactly. That 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 also is true for I would say the bulk of them. Yeah, I think so. I Everybody's think so. not getting paid. I'm sure there's some long snapper out there that's still got to do his algebra homework. But there's a lot of guys that are doing this because they they need that structure in their lives. They need all of these things to get back to normal. A lot of them are doing it to try and work their way into the NFL or to try and work their way up the depth chart and whatever. Because when life does eventually go back to normal, you want to set yourself up to be in the right position. Take advantage of opportunities where you get them. Uh, Matt said yeah. these guys are in good shape. They have a low risk of it. Michael said, I love you, Damien, but stop drinking the Kool-Aid. Terry said, let's get Gary worked up. They're risking their lives, Gary. <laughs> and then Matt said, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I swear, Matt, I knew it was going to get nuts, but either way. All right, so uh, the, the Big Ten stuff with the divisions early, we're off of that one. Let's go ahead and uh, – Damien said, I'm not talking about risking their lives with the virus. I'm talking about risking their lives with all the riots happening. I mean, I don't think we have to worry about that with the uh, with being on the field and whatnot because there's not going to be any fans in the stands or anything. Anyway, Matt Miller said, Chris is back. The headline is always BS. There was a healthy 17-year-old that had diabetes, 200 pounds overweight. That isn't healthy. Da -da -da -da. Uh, Michael said, I know it'll never happen, but if they never tested any of these players, I wonder if we would know who has it or not. I doubt it. And No. Uh, the majority of them are asymptomatic. Like we, we would never have any. Well, idea. all of the college kids have been not not a, not one of them was sick. Yeah, not, not one. No hospitalizations we, of all of the sports, all sports, all sports combined: football, basketball, baseball. Everybody who's been tested in sports. You're talking about tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands of times. Yeah, one person had sick like symptoms flu like symptoms that they felt like death they felt like ass and that was freddie freeman and he came back and hitting homers last night yep so either way i mean that's that's a lot of folks to not just have this thing and there's a whole listen i'm going to give you we can't just look at death because there's a whole lot of gray area between dead and healthy all right i Agreed. live my life in that area by the way okay I'm, I'm as far from, I'm closer to dead than I am healthy, but neither here nor there. There's a whole lot between there. None of these people are anything but healthy. And that's, that's where you've got to say, all right, we have to look at this thing a little different. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Uh, Terry <laughs> McKinnon's in McKinnon's overseas. He got to jump in. Terry said, uh, let's burn the, uh, this MF or down. Uh, Matt said, I heard there were six cardboard cutouts at a baseball game that tested positive for COVID. Terry said, yeah, they were all at the Marlins game. Uh <laughs> Hang on. That's a, that's a story I wasn't here for, but, but, but I'll give you two cents on that since it got brought up. Go ahead. The Marlins ravaged with this thing. I think we're up to 18 now. 19. Have it? 19 as of today. 19 as of today. Okay. Yeah. Zero through the rest of the MLB. Goose egg. One team. Now that shows you the dangers of if we got one bad apple and he he gets something, he gets a little crazy, and these guys get in close. But if for the most part, everybody on the team says we're going to follow the rules and we're going to do our job because we're adults and we're going to stay away from this stuff and it's too important, then th it seems to work really well. They're not in a bubble, and we're talking goose egg I, outside of the Marlins. I will I will say this: the Phillies had. Two guys, um, there was one that was a manager and one that was a staffer that both tested positive for COVID today, and they went ahead and postponed whatever their next uh, series but, And that's So that's the team the Marlins played. And right. That's the well, team, those are the people that would have been around other Marlins right. but players none of the and players staff. have. So, and Damien said yeah. two White Sox players got COVID over the weekend. Um, but, yeah, but that had nothing to do with the, with the Marlins. So what we're saying yeah. is – there are guys here and there, and they are dropping off and quarantining, and other guys are stepping up in their role and playing, and it is moving along fine. I mean, yep. it, the the number of tests that Major League you're Baseball talking, has run, in Major League Baseball it was over six thousand. It was point. That they test. Yeah, it was point three percent were positive. That's it, and none of them had symptoms. So, yep. you know, I think baseball is doing a pretty good job. 
doing I thought a pretty baseball's good job. doing a great job. Uh, Michael said, Chris, what's your opinion on the Kelly suspension? I love that guy, but did you see his post on Instagram? His his Instagram post was incredible. So, I, all right, I'll, I'll address the Joe Kelly thing. Yeah. So, there's, I feel a little strange about this. Okay, I love Joe Kelly a lot. All right, I really do. He's definitely a guy that you want on your uh, team, on your ball club. He is not afraid to go after people. All right. So he's a, he's a great teammate and I'm, I'm for that. I didn't like this because I'm not a fan of this. The baseball traditionalists will hate me. I don't like the policing themselves and let them work it out on the field. That's bullshit. We're adults. You don't do that. You damn sure don't throw at somebody's head. He threw it two different players heads. So I'm okay with the suspension. Anybody who's crying, they cheated and they didn't get a suspension and he threw it to somebody but didn't even hit him and he got suspended. That's why baseball, you're an idiot, okay? You just need to take <laughs> your brain and stop thinking that way. They were given immunity, immunity, had to be given immunity so baseball could figure out the problem. You don't like that they got they cheated and got away with it. I know it sucks. I'm going to tell you this. If you are so naive that you believe college football players aren't getting paid and you believe that the Astros were the only team doing this, then I can't help. We can't have an intelligent conversation between two reasonable people. All right. For three years, the Astros did this for three years, three, all three years, they lost at least four or five players to free agency or trades to other teams. Not one of those other players went to another team and was like, Hey, we got to play them, and they're cheating, and we're not. We should we should say so. We should do no. They got there and like, oh, y'all were watching video cameras and banging on trash cans. Mm, we don't do this shit here. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. And you get in the batter's box. You go one player. One there's one organization I know of that wasn't cheating. That's the A's because one player went to the A's, was a pitcher, and was like, wait a minute, y'all don't have some system to tip pitches. Oh, hell no. I'm not pitching against these guys when <laughs> my guys don't have the same advantage they've got. We're in the same division. No, we're not doing that. No, no, I'm calling somebody at the Major League Baseball, and we're, we're getting this squashed now. There's been new evidence coming out, year 2017, 2018, videotapes of the Yankees doing the same stuff. The ball, The balls on Aaron Judge <laughs> to stand in front of a camera and whine and cry a victim when he was doing the same thing. If I'm accused of something, okay, or let's say that if Gary was accused of something, all right, that he absolutely did, and I'm doing the same thing, but nobody's accused me yet, I will be the last person to ever speak an ill word to him about it or to anybody about it. I don't care. That's just bad karma. That's bad juju. You don't do that. The balls to say, I'm doing, we're doing the same thing that they're doing just a little differently. Come on, man. You're not a victim of anything but being a baby bitch. That's it. <laughs> That's it. The hell I with love, the Yankees. I love Chris coming in here hot today. I love been off for three days, enjoyed his uh his week out coming in with flames throwing. I'm, Look, man, I'm just I just know that too many people in baseball are doing the same thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I know that they're all doing it. And do I like it? No. Do I want it to continue? No. So I'm okay that, that we stopped it. But do I think that the Astros are tainted? Do I think that they're the evil empire that we should hate everything about them and they should pay some massive penalty? No, I don't. Because I think half the other teams were doing it too, especially your big market team with the money to put in the technology. All right. The right. Oakland A's don't even pay for Coca Cola. Okay. Yeah. The damn sure not going to pay for extra technology. <laughs> Matt Miller said, All the other teams, yeah, they're doing yeah. it. Uh, Matt Miller said the Joe Kelly post was hilarious. Also, hitting in the head is stupid, but I don't mind hitting the rib cage. Never seen Korea swing that bad up until this year on a breaking ball. Uh, Terry said the Cubs don't cheat because if they did, uh, they would have knocked the skin off the ball. Uh, <laughs> Matt Miller said the Yankees thing has been disproven over and over again, but keep trying with that narrative. Look, they it hadn't been just, literally no, 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 this no. week. There was new evidence that just came out of somebody sitting in the stands videotaping game, videotaping catchers. When they say disproven, they're saying that Major League Baseball came out and said, actually, no, they didn't cheat. That's what they're saying. So okay, the and, Major and League Baseball happen. said that. And if I was but, Major League Baseball, I'd say the same thing. Yes, it's obviously. the same thing that happened with Spygate and all that other bullshit with the Patriots in the, in the league. It's, Matt, Matt it's Miller. the Patriots got called doing this, and Roger Goodell called two owners and said, "Hey, I got evidence against your team. 
What what should I do here? And then uh, burn that shit to the ground yeah, in this investigation right now. Just end it now because we're all doing it. Because if you got to go deeper in the investigation, it's going to get bad. So just end it. Terry said, but they're risking their lives, Gary. Uh, <laughs> Matt Miller said, I wouldn't expect great logic from a Red Sox fan, though. So those fighting words, man. If Matt trying to come in here. I don't really I, know how being a fan of the Red Sox hurts my logic. Nothing, there's nothing about it at all. It's a fan thing. <laughs> he's he's yeah. a Yankees fan. Of course he's going to say that. It's fine. Oh, we well, love you, Matt. Mean. It's all good. Michael said, I agree. Everyone finds the competitive edge. I don't mind them throwing at guys. That's been a part of baseball forever, but you can't throw at someone's head. Uh, Will yeah. said, sign stealing is one thing, but if you use electronics, you've crossed the line. Uh, but everybody's using electronics now. That's the problem yeah. is technology's too good. Uh, Terry said, get on him, Matt. Uh, Will, this is Matt Miller, by the way. Uh, yeah. Will said, tell the NFL to release those Patriot tapes. Nope, no chance, because then you'd have to release everybody. Steelers. And they, they burned and, them. Yeah. Why did they burn them? Why did they destroy them? Because they, ha- because the Steelers and the Ravens and the Rams all had tapes on them. Michael said, I guess, uh, I guess Chris is okay with the patch cheating. And then he said, this should get him worked up. And he said, this is obviously the Pope Chris episode. Uh, no, that's fine. I understand. <laughs> I understand all these things are such cheap, low hanging fruit. I get it. Listen, listen, I used to try to be funny a long time ago and it's just easy to make quick jokes. That's fine. You know? So, Hey, Justin said, or uh, sorry, Matt Miller said, I just hate the Red Sox. I'm just effing with you, Chris. So that's okay. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Hey, let's move into another topic. Now that we're 30,